Welcome to the Unscripted SEO interview. I'm your host, Mark A. Preston, and today we have a very special guest with us, none other than Neil Patel, who most of you will probably know. I'm not going to give a big, massive introduction because I want to get to know the real Neil Patel. Hi, Neil. Hey, thanks for having me. That's fantastic for you to join us today. Right, just to give um, the audience a bit of an overview of who Neil Patel is. So where, how did you get into the industry and when was that? Yeah, so uh, it's probably around 2001. Um, so a little bit more than 20 years ago, technically 22 years ago. And I started a job board couldn't get any traffic visitors paid a marketing firm they didn't produce results had to learn it on my own and i started off with seo back then keep in mind facebook and a lot of those platforms did not exist uh so you would do things like paid ads banners cpc ads you know like on google pay per click um or overture which was uh, yahoo and uh seo was another big channel yeah so what is it particularly about seo that excites you it's a great way for the little guy to get tons of traffic without having big budgets. Yeah. Well, what you mentioned the little guy there. So uh, do, you, do you specialize in working with just big corporate companies or is it you help the little guy as well? Uh, we work with medium businesses all the way to large corporations. We have some small businesses, but, uh, um, you know, Typically, most of our revenue does come from large corporations. What I mean that I love it because a little guy can get results. You can go use tools and learn a lot on your own and do SEO without having a big money investment if you're willing to put in the time and energy yourself. A lot of other marketing forms don't exist uh, or they exist, but they don't provide those kind of results without um, money, right? Some of the other marketing channels out there, you have to put in money to get results. SEO, organic social, there's only a few channels where you can really do well that really exist for the small guy that doesn't have any money. Okay. Now, obviously, you have got a massive personal brand yourself, right? What, what was the thing that you did to the really accelerated your own personal brand? There, there wasn't anything. I, 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 I did not try to build a personal brand. There wasn't one thing that I did. When you do something long enough, and I don't think my personal brand's that big. There's so many bigger personal brands than mine. But when you do something for, call it 20 plus years, and you try to do a decent job at it, you know, hopefully you build some sort of brand, whether it's personal, corporate, maybe a bit of both. Um, but nothing there, you're not going to become an overnight success. There's not one thing that builds a personal brand. It's a lot of little things that add up over time from an outside perspective. They don't really see it that way, but that usually is the real case. It's a lot of little things done for a very long time and done consistently that build up a personal brand. So when, when you say a long time, if somebody's starting off to build up their corporate brand or their personal brand, how long is it before you start when you do consistent things? Is it before you really start to get known? Three to five years. That's a conservative estimate. You know, somewhere in that time range, you'll start getting more well known. Sounds like a long time, but most people uh, are looking for that one year solution, and it's very rare. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I mean a lot of people look for the quick wins in the industry. Do you, do you think there's any, do quick wins exist? Quick wins sometimes exist. Uh, it, it was, you know, when, when you say quick wins, a, a lot of people just get lucky. Um, but here, here's a great example. So everyone in the SEO industry is familiar with ChatGPT. It's a project from OpenAI. OpenAI was founded in 2015. ChatGPT did not just come out this month or last month or the last year. They've been working on the whole vision, whole product since 2015. It's not an overnight success. 
Sam Altman is an overnight success. Before this, Y Combinator, he did a lot of other things before that. Did a lot of angel investing. He's been an entrepreneur for ages. The point I'm getting at is everything worthwhile just takes time. Yes, sometimes people get lucky and things just blow up overnight, but it's extremely rare. That's like pulling a needle in a haystack. So you say consistency is the key to anything in marketing, then, do you? I think consistency and learning from what's happening because there's so many algorithms and changes. You got to experiment, learn what's happening and adapt. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure how many videos you've done. It must be quite an, a lot because, I mean, social media is just flooded with all your videos. Do you think that being consistent in all platforms with all your various videos really helps? Uh, it, it does. You know, it drives good branding for corporate, personal, it drives leads. Um, I would always recommend it to people. You know, what we do, there's nothing magic at our agency, NP Digital. We're one of the fastest growing ad agencies, uh, according to Ad Week. And a lot of it just comes down to consistency and doing something long enough. And what we're doing isn't rocket science. There's a lot of other people that can do the same thing, but they're just not willing to put in the blood, sweat, and tears into it. I mean, one of the, the conversation I have with business owners and individuals is, well, okay, I get the consistency, but what do I talk about? What do I do videos on? I mean, obviously yourself, you've done thousands of videos. Where do you get your inspiration from? I get my inspiration from just reading and also talking to people and figuring out what pain points and issues they have. Great example of this. You can go on Google, type in any keywords within your industry, and you'll also see people also ask. People also ask is what people are curious about. You can then go and start creating content around all those topics. It could be video, could be text-based. It's up to you. Right. So it's realistically just seeing what people want to know. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. That, that really is all about content creation. It all comes down to what do people want to know? If you create that, you'll do well. If you create content around what people don't care for, then it wouldn't matter. So do you have a big team behind you um, for creating content? Not a big team. Uh, one video person for all my short form. One video person that I see once a month for all my long form. Even the short form, I see him once a month as well. Short form, I see him for a few hours a month. The long form, I see him for maybe like three, four hours a month. Um, and two other people on the text based side. So a small team, four or five, if I had a guess. All right. So so it's not a massive team then. It's, Correct. Uh, it just takes, do you say your personal time? It takes, what, a, two, three days a month? or. Um, so... Personal time to create content, probably. No, 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 no. Uh, if I had a guess, 24 hours a month, max, including podcasting and everything. All right. Okay, so it's a lot less than I actually thought, actually. Yeah, and that's a max. There's some months where it's much less than that. Yeah, okay. Now, obviously, in the industry and I'm talking the wider marketing industry, if businesses don't have the budget to employ um, an agency or a freelancer, what, what could the, those people do? Do it themselves. Look, you can bust out your phone and start recording and creating content and uploading it. The issue is, is people don't want to put in the time. It has nothing to do with hiring. That's why I said SEO is one of the only channels that really work for the small media business. Not because they need to pay my agency, but with SEO and organic social, you can do those without having to pay anyone money. You can put in the time yourself and learn it. Just people aren't willing to do it, right? Yeah, you can learn paid advertising too, but you got to spend money on the paid ads. So it's just like, that's tougher for a small business, but SEO and organic social is very doable for businesses of all sizes. So 
if somebody had to choose between going out and writing content pieces or doing videos, what would you say would create the biggest impact between both? People spend more time on videos than text-based content. At least I was reading some stats uh, a few days ago, but that was the latest stats that I read. I forgot what percentage or time, but it was videos dominated more than text-based content. Um, so I would tell people to focus on video first. Okay. Now, just to get to know you as a person, right? What does your day-to-day -day look like? My day-to-day -day is a lot of phone calls, meetings, some content creation, uh, answering emails, uh, strategy stuff, working on client accounts, you know, typical normal day, spending time with kids, watching some TV, like news. I watch BBC quite a bit. Okay. Now, you, you rebranded your agency from Neil Patel to MP. Huh? What was... What was the reason behind that? We originally wanted to call it NP Digital. We couldn't get the domain name, and then eventually the person sold it. Ah, as simple as that. Yeah, we <laughs> wanted it from day one. We tried getting it. The guy said no. When the economy started going down a little bit, they hit us back up saying, hey, do you still want to buy it? Same price. And we said yes. Right. So with NP Digital, how big of an agency is it? We're between seven and 800 employees. We're US, Canada, UK, Brazil, Australia, India, Singapore, Germany. We're about to add Portugal and Spain. When I'm saying these regions, we actually have like a managing director or someone leading up a specific region. Um, but we have people in many different regions on top of that as well. But um, my guess is we'll probably have, be in over 20 countries with leaders in each of those countries by the end of 2023. So how has your personal brand directly impacted the growth of your agency? It gave us an amazing start because it provided us leads. <coughs> but... Um, you know, believe it or not, majority of our revenue, 70-ish percent, comes from uh, employee referrals, client referrals, uh, and just word of mouth. Right. Okay, so literally... I, I think it's actually like 76% to be exact comes from those three channels. Right. Now, this is why I love doing... Um, videos like this because perception was like the majority of people go to your agency because of your name no you have to remember when you are working with large companies let's say you want to work with the fortune 100 they don't care about neil patel they care about who are the people working on my account and what are their skill sets and what experience they have in my industry that's going to produce results so it's all about the team who work within the agency. Not just the team who works with an agency, but the team who is on their account. That's who they care about more than anything else. Right. Okay, so like when you're working with these big companies, what sort of requirements do you have to put in? What sort of pre-sales prep work do you have to put in in order just to be, be at the table to pitch to these corporates? There's not an easy answer for that because these big corporations all have unique requirements. So what you have to put in varies based on their needs. A lot of times they send out an RFP, request for a proposal. They tell you the requirements and then you either decide if you want to put in the energy or not. You could end up sometimes spend $100,000, $200,000 to try to get a deal and you may not win it. Wow. I'm going to say, so you really need to have a solid base behind you and financial backing in order to really go after these bigger contracts to start with. Correct. Yes. Well, I, or you can just put in your own time, right? Um, for me, the reason we have those expenses is because we have so much staff. So then we're paying for those hours and if we don't close it, we wasted the money, but I think it's always worth it. Okay. So... Um, you say you're in all these various countries. How involved are you personally within the agency? 
Very involved. That's what I do full time. Right. So is your own focus on building this one this agency up or do you have other uh-huh. other entities you focus on? No, no, I just focus on the agency. Right. On my time. All your time. And um moving forward is what you personally What's your personal journey looking like in the future? The same. I don't really see it changing. Focus all the time on growing the agency and try to become one of the biggest global ad agencies out there. What's your why? 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 That? I just love it. Just I'm look- having fun. I love it. It's just passionate about marketing. It has nothing to do with money or anything like that. It's just a goal and I want to try to achieve it. Right. So it really is because you just love the work you're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how important is um, obviously family? How does family fit into everything for you? Family fits in great. I'm at home. I work from home. Um, and I see my kids often throughout the whole day. And I play with them and I read to them and all that kind of good stuff. So, um, yeah, I try to be there as a parent, all the major events and everything like that. And, you know, try to support my kids in whatever they decide to do in life and whatever makes them happy. Right. So when you say that you work from home, do you, don't you see a need for you to be like in the office with the teams? Oh, we're virtual. Oh, everything's virtual, is it? Uh Uh-huh. Post COVID, we move virtual. All right. Okay. That I wasn't aware of. <laughs> See? Yeah. We still have offices. Barely anyone goes into them, but we're, we're virtual. Right. And do you find um, office based versus virtual is a good move? Uh, we like virtual. Both are fine. There's pros and cons to both. There's nothing wrong with either. It depends what a company wants. That's why we have a bit of both then. People can either go into office or they can work from home. We don't force them with any uh, specific requirement. We let them decide. Okay. Now, going, moving on to SEO, obviously this is uh, the SEO interview. Um, what what do you think's missing in the industry? I mean, people focus on tactics. Not enough people are focusing uh, enough on user experience and truly trying to delight them. I'm not talking about user experience just from like a low time perspective. I'm talking about user experience from like, how do you just create amazing products, amazing services, amazing content, and just try to delight them. Some people do. I wouldn't say it's totally missing, but that's not the main focus. People are like, oh, let me build more links. Let me, you know, optimize this, you know, element in within my code to try to like game the system. It's like, well, if you put the user first and do what's best for them in the long run, you should win. You should, as you know, I, I, I put an asterisk around yeah, should. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, and if, if you could have the power to change something within the industry, what would it be? Um, I don't know if I would change anything. You know, I don't really see anything wrong with it. Been in it for a long time. People are friendly. It's nice. People are trying to learn more. You know, it's, it's a good industry. Good. So, first time I've heard somebody say that. <laughs> yeah, everyone has their own take, but I love the industry. It's it's done wonders for me and wonders for a lot of people. And when I first got into industry, people were really uh, welcoming with open arms. And you know, I, I think it's a great community. Yeah, I was going to say how obviously you're giving your time up to be on uh, this interview now. Is what other things are you involved in in order to just help people? Uh, I create content. We try to educate and help through that, but I'm actually not that involved in much. My wife is. So I try to focus on uh, building a business. My wife focuses on philanthropy and tries to help through that. So she spends her full time raising kids and uh helping out a lot of different organizations wonderful 
per, it, it's real it's a really good feeling when you you know you can help others in life uh, it, it can be i don't really look at it as like a feeling i, I look at it as more like a you know, it's just like, there's a lot of things that are wrong. And as humans, if we have the ability to help others out, you should, right? I, I don't look at it as a feeling. What makes me feel better isn't the helping other people out. It's actually seeing things improve. You know, it's just like, there's so many kids out there that people are like, oh, they don't live in good areas. They're not going to succeed. Well, if you gave them the tools and the education, why can't they? They're hungry. Who says they're not smart? Who says they can't accomplish amazing things? Who says they can't build multi-billion dollar companies? Who says they can't cure cancer? And for me, it's more like it's sad to see a lot of people in this world not have opportunities and others help them out. And helping them, yes, it's you could say it is a good feeling, but what's a better feeling for me is seeing change and then seeing the people that you help out try to help other people as well and just it continue and Hopefully, you know, it'll make the world a better place. Uh, I say more so like what's a good feeling is like what Elon Musk is doing. What he's doing is tremendous, right? Trying to make it where people can live on multiple civilizations, not have a single point of failure being Earth. Like that's crazy in a good way. I, you know, I, I don't have the capability to do what he does. It's not just even money. Sure, I don't have the money he does, but I don't also have the brain power and intellect that he does as well. Right. I was going to say some, something you mentioned there is I've had conversations with a lot of people. Nobody knows who they are. And they said they, they've struggled getting a chance in the industry because a lot of places they go to, the first thing they ask is, well, do you have a degree? Well, I, I just find in marketing all these job ads that you see just a degree is required. And for me, the, some of the best people I've spoke to in the industry. Uh, I disagree passionate. with that. I disagree with that. Most of the people I know hiring for marketing in the corporate world or for agencies, none of them look at marketing degrees. I don't, yes, if you go on Indeed, sure, a lot of jobs require it, but they're not really required. So many people hire marketers without college degrees. You know, majority of the people I know looking for marketers that hit me up, whether it's C level, even entry level, I rarely ever, I don't even think I've been ever asked once, do you know someone with a degree? They're just like, do you know someone good? No one really cares if someone has a degree. I think that's a big misconception in most fields. It may be on the job listing as a requirement, but people are just using boilerplate stuff and then people really don't care if someone has a degree. So do you think it's the sort of recruitment HR industry that has created that? Because I've known, I know uh, quite a few people that haven't gone for jobs because it states it needs, they need a degree. Um, I don't know if it's the HR or where it's coming from. I just know that at the end of the day, marketers do not need degrees that's a big misconception and if someone else tells hr recruiting or whoever to hire that person they don't have a degree there's a good chance that person's gonna get hired uh, especially if it's a c-level saying hire that person you can work at any major tech company most of them do not require degrees they used to but times have changed Right. So I know what, people who work at Google today, Facebook, Apple, the list goes on and on. I know tons of people that work at these organizations that they don't have degrees. And a lot of them are really well off and well paid in these organizations. So what is important then? If degrees aren't important, what is important? Uh, skill set. Are you good at what you what they're looking for? If you can help them accomplish what they're looking for. You're good to go. Communication, management skills is also important. Um, you know, being able to think outside the box, being able to solve solutions within when you're given constraints, all these things are super important. Right. So, so how does somebody get the experience in order to be in a position to 
actually um, prove they can solve all these problems? Volunteer, do work for free, internships, you know, create your own websites, practice on it. There's a lot of ways to get experience. Help nonprofits with their marketing for free. You can do a lot of stuff to get experience. Okay, brilliant. I'm going to say, looking at things from um, the industry, is when it comes to personal branding, you have positive and negative personal branding. I mean, everybody goes through that. As far as your personal brand's concerned, is when there is some negative um, context behind things, how do you sort of handle that? I don't have to. I just ignore it. I don't even read most of the negative stuff in the first place. Right. Do you, not you personally as well, but do you think people should just ignore it or should they understand why people's got that perception? Because if it's not true, then shouldn't we try and change that perception into what the truth is? Okay, let me ask you this. If someone thought negatively of you, does it really matter? It doesn't matter to me yeah, okay. personally, but I'd want to understand why they, that, they think that. I, I agree with that. But if you try to understand it and it's not true and there's nothing for you to really fix, does it really matter then? No. But, but I mean... You got it. I mean, in essence, I've actually understood why they think that because perception is a dangerous thing. It can be fantastic sure. and dangerous at the same time. But I don't understand why people need to focus on fixing something when it's not true. Does that make sense? Whether it's perception or not, it doesn't matter. Go live your life. We're in a, we're in a world where everyone cares what other people think. I don't want my kids growing up to think like that. You shouldn't be doing things for ego. You shouldn't be doing things for praises from others. You do what's ethical. You do what's moral. You do what's right. And if people hate, they hate. It shouldn't affect your day. We're growing up in a world where social media is everything and people care how many likes they have or what, how many good comments they have. You know, again, if you're doing what's right and ethical and moral, you know, don't worry what haters are going to say. Haters are going to hate. Just live your life. You can't please everyone. It's the reality of it. All right. So you say your passion is to like build your agency. Uh -huh. What sort of passions do you have outside work? My passion is mainly work. And other than that is family. There's only real two things. I'm a workaholic. Right. So when you say you're a workaholic, roughly how many hours per week or do you just work? I just work so at least 60, maybe up to 80 max. Right. Uh, so do you, do you have any sort of hobbies outside of work? No, it's mainly just work. Right. You sound a bit like me. <laughs> I'm going to say on that front. I'm going to say, uh, right. So... If somebody wants to build up their own agency, what's important? Clients and satisfaction. Doing what's best for clients is really what matters. Um, and another thing is if you're trying to start an agency from scratch, pick a niche. So are you going to do just SEO for e-commerce sites or paid ads for e-commerce sites or uh, influencer marketing for B2B software companies? I don't know. I'm, I'm making it up, but you need to start off with a niche because it's too competitive to be an agency that does everything, do something exceptionally well and just specialize in it. Later on, you can expand to different verticals and different service offerings, but start off with a niche. So is that same if you, they want to run a specialist SEO agency, should they then focus on a key area? Yes. Okay. Now, you say what's important is the clients. Obviously, without clients, you can't build the agency up. But for the smaller agencies, what can they be doing better to 
it generate more clients? Um, one strategy that you can end up doing is go to Crunchbase, look at all the recently funded companies, hit them up, tell them everything that they're doing wrong, break it down, tell them how to fix it. A portion of them will hire you. It's a great strategy that works to get business. Right. So I was going to say, don't these companies think of it as though, well, you're telling me what our team's doing wrong? Or is there any sort of, you know, just like brick wall there? Uh, not necessarily. Some people may look at it that way. But some people look at it as, oh, we have growth opportunity. Let me work with this person and fix it. It's the question is, do you want to look at it as the ha the glass is half full or do you want to look at it as the glass is half empty? Right. Now, looking at your tool set, you purchase. Yeah. So yep. what, what tools do you have? Uh, answer the public and Uber suggests. Those are our main two tools. Okay. Uh, now, what... Why why tools? Um, my background is software and tools are also a great way to uh, get our agency's name out and have more people knowing what we're doing. Okay. So on the um, Uber Suggest, what, what's the roadmap for that? What's your plans? The big thing we're working on is AI writing and automating as much as possible with SEO through AI. Right. Now, obviously, you've just touched upon a minefield there with AI and the industry, chat GPT. Now, what's, what's your view on AI being a content generator replacement? It's not there yet. The quality isn't there at all. So how I think can... it's a great start. I think it can help you generate topic ideas. I think it can help you start writing a piece of content. I think humans need to still go in and edit it. Just think of it this way. If it takes you two hours to write a post, maybe AI will save you an hour. Right. So it's definitely not a replacement. In its current form. Who knows two, three, four, or five years from now. Right. So how can um, marketers use the, the power of AI to help them do their jobs better? Uh, it can give you a head start. Just look at it as something that can do the outline, the framework for you, and then you can just fill in the rest. It can even help you with ideation. So what, with that in mind, what do you see the future of SEO being like? Uh, the tools will try to do a lot of the works that humans are doing and it'll save them a lot of time and eventually it'll automate a lot of the stuff. Will that have a negative impact regarding jobs in the industry? No. I don't know yet. And the reason I say that is there could be elements that a tool can't do well, like strategy, um, or a tool may not be able to integrate the personal experience as much. So they're still may they'll always I think they'll be used for people for a very very long time. It's just what they focus their time and attention on they shift. Right. Okay. So so people shouldn't be worried about their jobs. What should they be focusing on then to make sure their future of their careers is secure? Keep learning anything that's new. Learn it. Understand it. Get good at it within the space and it'll make you more valuable in the future. Right. It's as simple as that then. I think so. Yeah. I was going to say, so, so a lot of what you've discussed is, is not, there's, there's no like magic bullet. Nope. It's just, I don't think the magic bullet exists in our space. Right. It's just doing things right for the audience. Uh-huh. And is that the same with SEO? Yeah. It's the same for most industries. Yeah. So now all, all the SEOs that are doing things just to manipulate the search engines, obviously they're not in this mindset. So 
surely if they were brought out of the mindset they're in and just do things properly to benefit the audience, wouldn't they have better results? In the long run, they should. In the short run, maybe not. But in the long run, they should. Right. So it, it's just basically they need to put more effort in in order exactly. to get to where they want. Yeah. Now, do, do you think, I mean, I'm not sure about you, but I th- is that due to laziness? Because a lot of SEO is hard work and it does take time and it does take a lot of energy. Do you think a lot of no, this? No, not necessarily. Some people could be lazy. Some people just may need results right away because they need money to pay their bills. Um, the reasoning on why people take shortcuts in life, you know, not just SEO, it varies person to person. Everyone has their own prerogative and reason why they need to take that shortcut. Right. Maybe they need results right now to hit some goal so that way they can pay their staff next month or whatnot. Some people are lazy and the list can go on and on why some people may take shortcuts, but it really is uh, each person may have their own reasons. Would I do it? No, but uh, have I done it in the past? Sure. When I was 16, 17 years old, I was looking for shortcuts. And as I got older, I realized I should not take shortcuts and I should do things the right way. So as as an SEO, if a business comes to you and says, well, we need results sort of very fast because, like you say, we have a massive um, uh, bill I get to a pay. payroll. Uh-huh. You know, what, what, what does that conversation look like then if people actually want rapid results? It, just like anyone would as an SEO you analyze the website you see if there's low hanging fruit maybe there's a quick fix that you can end up making and giving them crazy results here's an edge case one's if they have a robots.txt file or their pages have no index on them for like 90% of the websites and they weren't supposed to and it was a mistake that they made internally and no one ever caught it well, you could remove that and they could actually get amazing results within 30 days. Sometimes you can actually provide really good results quickly without taking shortcuts. Sometimes you can't. If you can't, you just got to be transparent and let them know. So it's just improving what they already have. It's not just that, but sometimes you're able to, sometimes you're not able to quickly. It varies business by business. Right. I gave you the example of the no index because we actually had someone who had a sub that had most of their pages not indexed when they should have been indexed, right? Great results, but then the first 30 days, did we do something amazing? No, anyone could have done that. It was just a mistake on there. Did we tell the client, look what we did, we're amazing? No, we told them, hey, you guys got this mistake, whether you pay us or not, you should just fix this, right? We try to be transparent as much as possible. And I think that's how people should run their businesses. Yeah, so... Regarding the whole uh, discovered, no, not indexed. So basically, Google's crawled the pages, but not indexing them. What can SEOs do about that? Well, make sure your code is clean. Make sure you have internal links. Make sure those pages are valuable. Make sure the content is unique. Um, All those factors really do help. Right. So... Obviously, your key focus is running the agency. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, what's important in a, a large scale agency like yours? Putting the clients first, putting the clients first, building amazing culture with the team, uh, and ho- hoping they understand that clients really do matter. Um, but I would say those are the two big things that really matter. Remember, we're in a service-based business. If you don't provide good service, you're shit out of luck. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say. Is, um, within the, the team structures, is the like individual teams that work with clients? How, how do, you, do you sort of organize the, the teams? Uh, we have an earned media team, which is like SEO, organic, uh, social, content creation, et cetera. We had a paid media team. Deals all the paid ads, whether it's social or search. 
Uh, we have a team for like CRO and email marketing. We have account managers, we have project managers, and then you have a little bit of everyone from different departments focusing on the clients. Right. And how important is awards and recognition, do you think, in the industry? I think they're important. I, I don't think they're the end-all be-all. A lot of the big companies out there don't have awards or tons of them. Um, I think what's more important than awards and recognition is, again, doing amazing results for customers and satisfying them. You don't need an award for that. But if you keep doing good work, they'll keep referring you more business. All right. So there is no magic one then? No. Like even awards, I don't know one award that we've gotten a lot of awards from like agency of the year to best SEO campaigns, best pay-per-click campaigns, the list goes on and on. I don't know one award that's driven us revenue uh, and got us a new customer, but it's nice to have them. But what really does drive revenue is providing amazing results for customers and them knowing it and them like your business. They spend more with you over time. They refer you more business. That's a real winning strategy. Okay. What now the the people within the teams are the what like you said are important. What what about the agencies you can't afford to hire really good people? What can they be doing to improve things? And if you can't hire really good people, don't hire them. You should focus on hiring really good people no matter what. Um uh, the really good people don't have to have all the experience in the world. Sometimes there could be a person fresh out of college or fresh out of high school and they're hungry and they're willing to learn and they are willing to do whatever it takes to succeed in a moral, ethical way. Um, and you can work with those people and train them up and make them even better. Um, and those people can do wonders for clients as well. Right. You can also hire, if you want people who are seasoned, you could hire them on a part-time basis. Maybe they can help you guys out on part-time until you grow more. There's a lot of solutions. Right. So it's not, there isn't one certain path, growth path you found that works better. No. No. Okay. Now, when it comes to Neil Patel, the brand, is, is the personal brand you have the same as the agency brand or how do you split the two apart? We don't really worry about that. We don't really try to separate them or combine them. The agency has its own brand. I have my own personal brand. Sometimes they get commingled. Sometimes they don't. I think people worry too much about the nitty gritty. Just like focus on the end result. If you're building a product, build the best product out there try to get in people's hands. If you're building agency, focus on your service and making sure it's the best service out there. Don't worry too much about things like, oh, how's my personal brand perceived? Or how's it going to mix with the corporate brand? Like, These are things that don't really matter in the grand scheme of things, right? What really matters is, is your product amazing? Is your service amazing? Are you doing whatever to delight customers? Are you creating amazing culture? Are you encouraging your employees to learn more and get better versus being negative? Like, These are the things that matter. So for a, a company, how important is the brand um, awareness for them when it comes to linking with the SEO? Uh, the bigger your brand, the easier it is to get rankings with SEO. And that has a direct link? From what we've seen, yes. Okay. Right. Well, I'm going to say it's amazing that you've given your time up to join us today. Now, for everybody watching this, is there anything the audience can do to help you? I appreciate it. Um, you know, what I would say is think about all the people within your local community and figure out a way to help them. And if you can do that, that'll make my day. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Is there anything you want to add? Thank you for your time. Thank you for interviewing me. Yes, you say I have a busy day, but you do too. There's other things you can be doing, spending time with your family, working, etc. So thank you for taking the time to interview me. You don't okay. have to. And is there 
anything that you want people to reach out to you about? If you need help with your marketing, check out our ad agency, NP Digital. Okay, brilliant. Well, thank you, Neil, for your time. I mean, it's flown by and I feel as though we got through such a lot there. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks. Bye.